Welcome to this video explaining how to use the ACH technique. In recent weeks, a discreet family-owned bank with offices in the UK and Switzerland has been the victim of several cyber attacks. Efforts are currently focused on identifying who conducted the attack. The bank's security team have been busy collecting information and you have been brought in as an analytical expert to facilitate an ACH session. Your first action is to ensure that there will be a broad spectrum of people from the bank present at the session in order to reduce the risk of knowledge gaps or cognitive traps like confirmation bias or groupthink shaping decisions. Through group discussion, you aim to agree three mutually exclusive hypotheses. Mutually exclusive means that if one hypothesis is shown to be true, all the others must be false. The group initially decides to focus on these three variations of a criminal organization. You remind them that these hypotheses are not mutually exclusive. They are all variations of one hypothesis, a criminal organization. With your help, the group revises its list. Technically, an insider could be classed as a criminal and also could be working for a hostile state. But in this case, the team are content that the options are sufficiently different. They populate the matrix with the hypotheses. Stage two, list significant evidence or relevant information. Next, you direct the group to select the information it judges to be the most relevant. You remind them that the reason why they chose the hypotheses before looking at the information is to reduce the risk of being influenced by specific information, which might limit certain potential options. There are more than 10 pieces of information available, but you ask them to use just five initially, as this is more manageable. You can add more information later. The group is confident that all the information comes from reliable sources, so there is no need to triage it based on its reliability. Stage three, analyze the diagnostic value of the evidence. They select the five pieces they regard as most pertinent to use as evidence plus one assumption. Then they work through each piece of information in turn and consider whether or not it is consistent with each hypothesis in turn. They use a Y for yes or consistent or N for no, inconsistent. There are other symbols you can use, for example, a question mark or NA, but in this example, we will just focus on yes and no. The group agrees that online hostile reconnaissance is consistent with criminal or insider threat activity, but not a hostile state. The group assumes that a state actor would have cyber capabilities powerful enough to bypass the need for this kind of research. You remind the group of the importance of working through each piece of evidence or assumption in turn and considering its consistency with the hypotheses based on its own merits, rather than when considered in conjunction with other pieces of information they are using. The group agrees that a signature is consistent with all hypotheses. Because this evidence has ranked consistently across all hypotheses, it is non-diagnostic. It does not help diagnose the situation and can therefore be excluded at this time. The group agrees that software exploits from the dark web are consistent with criminals and insider threats. Evidence four is particularly interesting. The internal breach was never reported outside the bank and no information is known to have been leaked. This supports just one of the three hypotheses. This piece of evidence caused a lot of debate among the group. The number used to contact the head of security was their personal one shared only with some colleagues. This personal number is not published online and although some members of the group are adamant that sophisticated criminals could acquire personal numbers, it is decided that this is unlikely in this situation. However, a state actor feasibly could and a bank insider may be one of those who already has it. The assumption is considered, but ranks consistently across all hypotheses, and like evidence too, is therefore non-diagnostic and can be disregarded at this time. Stage four, refine the matrix. At this stage, you could remove lines E2 and A1 as you decided they were non-diagnostic. You could add extra lines of information to replace the gaps, or expand your matrix. However, you remind the group that even though evidence or assumptions may not appear useful at this time, they should not be disposed of completely. 
As the investigation continues and other information becomes available, previously non-applicable information may become relevant. Stage 5. Draw tentative conclusions. The group has now completed its analysis of the five pieces of information and the assumption. You advise them to add the scores for each column as shown. Stage 6. Analyse your conclusions. A key purpose of ACH is to reduce options down to those demanding further scrutiny. Therefore, based on the group's current analysis, the hostile state is least supported by evidence. However, it would be prudent to gather more information first before discarding it. Stage 7. Report your conclusions. The group communicates this with other colleagues in an appropriate manner. This could be a verbal briefing, an email summary, or more formal report or product. Stage 8. Identify indicators. This is where you also ask other experts what signs and indicators they would expect to see if either of the leading hypotheses were true. For example, what would be the indicators of an insider threat be? Perhaps identifying an individual who exhibited unusual working patterns or sought information outside of their usual work remit. Indicators help you to continue to refine your analysis. To summarise, you have successfully facilitated the group through this ACH session and helped them aggregate relevant data and apply a rigorous analytical methodology using ACH. You have identified two hypotheses that demand further scrutiny and rejected one, therefore enabling the bank to focus its investigation efforts more efficiently. Importantly, you have also helped them create a clear and defensible audit trail of how it reached its current decision based on the information available.